Welcome to Ask the Astro Shaman. I'm recording this on March 8, 2019, about a week after I would normally have done it, but hey, I'm getting to it as I can. We have two questions for this edition of Ask the Astro Shaman. This is the third in our video series of this. By the way, I don't think I introduced myself. I'm Benjamin Bernstein of astroshaman.com. So our first question is from Daniel. He's asking a rather broad-ranging question. He says, I'm finding there is a lot of demonic activity, mind control, and lynch mob mentality lately. People can't talk to each other. Simple differences of opinion become grounds for fighting before facts can be brought to the table. There is no table. It's been broken. Part of this is fake news, but there are spiritual, psychic, and energetic components to the control system behind the words and flying fists. I'm hoping you can address astrologically not just the political scene, but the interpersonal and social scene. What forces do you see in play here? I'd like to think that because dark powers are being exposed and challenged lately, they're going for broken desperation. I would appreciate your astrologically and psychically informed insights regarding the apparent overthrow of the deep state, the global banking oligarchs and ancient ruling families, and what new regime might be rising. Also, your views on mundane prepping and the general premonition of dread. More mind control, or should we all become more self-reliant? Very good questions, Daniel. So let me begin. I'm going to answer this in several parts. First, let's do the astrological part. Um, part of what's going on with the deep state exposure and, uh, and all the exposure of the underbelly of dark things that have been going on is the presence of Pluto in Capricorn. And uh, this, this Pluto came into the sign of Capricorn way back in 2008. He'll be there through roughly 2023. And the nature of Pluto in Capricorn is it exposes the malfeasance of the powers that be. Capricorn represents the existing power structure, banks, governments, religions, etc. And Pluto is like the investigative reporter. Pluto gets in there and, and brings up from the depths what's been hidden. And anytime Pluto comes into a sign, this phenomenon occurs. So now we're working with the large powers that be. So that's one level of why all this is being exposed now. It's been going on a long time. I'm not agreeing, by the way, with everything Daniel says here. I'm just saying there's a general sense of the, the dark things being exposed more broadly. Um, another factor we have running here is the Uranus-Pluto square. Now again, this is just close to wrapping up now. It actually was exact. Uh, Uranus squared Pluto three times 2013, forgive me, 2012 through 2015. In terms of their orb, their period of influence, that started back in 2008 and it will last through next year, 2020. So Uranus square Pluto boils down to revolutionary transformation. Things get shook up, things become unstable, and it's a time of radical shift. Anytime Uranus and Pluto make a hard aspect, a conjunction, an opposition, or a square to each other, the times become very um, unsettled and revolutionary. Uh, most dramatically back in the 1960s. Uh, they were in orb 1960 to 1972, and uh, of course that was a very radical time, not just in the U.S., but the whole world. And now they've been doing a square, which is their next major interaction since then. So every few decades, Uranus and Pluto make a, one of these hard aspects to each other and things go into turmoil. So that's another reason why things are feeling so crazy now. Um, another factor that's just 2019 focused and this will be a just to this year, there's a triple conjunction of Saturn, Pluto, and the South Node, all of which represent old karma coming up to be dealt with. So this is a tremendous shadow work opportunity when people who are conscious and know how to work with shadow work and clear it from themselves can do huge amounts of evolutionary work. And in my own experience, the clearing of shadow work leads to deeper spiritual awakening. However, those who are not conscious enough and are stuck on the surface and pointing fingers outward are going to have a lot of turmoil and um, there will be even more dust in the air and challenge and difficulty for those who are feeling these difficult forces getting triggered by them but not having an effective way to clear them themselves. Let me just mention briefly, I do have a tool on my site that you can use to clear your own shadow stuff, your own old wounds and pain, um, and it's called the Healing Invocation. And if you want to check that out, uh, in the current version of the Astro Shaman site, you would go to the, the menu bar, the last words resources. First item down from there says Heal and Awaken Invocations, and that'll take you to a couple of posts, the second of which is about how to do this healing process. Um, on my newer site, which will be up in a few weeks, uh, the word invocations will be right there on the menu bar, and uh, you can just get to it from there. 
But uh, the bottom line is you just say to your higher self, maximum healing that serves highest good, please. You rest in passive breath awareness and this uh, higher part of you will come in and stir up and flush out whatever is currently being catalyzed. And I'm really oversimplifying it, but that's, that's the basic idea of what this works with. So with so much intensity in the air, it is time astrologically to be doing your own shadow work. As I like to say, if I'm pointing one finger out at you, I got three fingers pointing back at me. <laughs> so, um, you know, I like to believe that we're all responsible for our own emotions. Uh, another person or situation can act as the catalyst, but if I'm feeling something in me, it's my responsibility, which is good because if it's their fault, then it's beyond my control. But if I'm responsible for my emotions, then I have the power to also heal them. So that's the broad astrological picture, some of the major reasons why things are in turmoil right now. Now, going beyond astrology, though, um, I believe there's a much larger force at play. Now, I'll, I'll just tell you up front, um, I'm a big fan of the channel material called The Law of One, which you can read free online if you're interested at lawofone.info. It's a material that was channeled um, about 35 years ago, a few, about 106 sessions, I believe, of channeling from this being called Ra, R-A, who is uh, several billion years beyond us in evolution. And um, what Ra says is that we're in a period now of possible graduation to the next level of reality. The, the grand scheme that Ra paints is that there are seven major levels of consciousness. Humanity is on level three, and every so often, uh, every few tens of thousands of years, we hit a graduation point where it's possible for each individual to make a choice about you know, moving to that next level, which would be called fourth density, which is a much more peaceful place than this. So um, the path Ra gives is that it says there's, there's two ways to graduate. One is to be at least 51% service to other, where you are actually genuinely a little more concerned about other people than yourself. Or you can graduate on the dark path, which is service to self, but you've got to be at least 95% self-centered. And, and that means you've got to totally close down your heart and be totally unfeeling, no compassion, and be totally about power, domination, and control. And apparently either path will get you graduated. And then those who graduated on the side of light, they go to a planet that's all beings of light. Those who graduate on the dark side go to a planet that's all, you know, it's like Klingons. They're all fighting each other for domination and control. And each, each path you spend a few you know, several billion years doing that as you go through your evolutionary process. So whether that's true or not, who knows? It makes sense to me. Um, and in the context of all the craziness on the planet right now, in that, in that, if that's a true scheme, then a soul that comes here to Earth at this time is coming to have that graduation opportunity to polarize to light or to dark. And with no conflict, there's no polarization. Uh, Ra says there were actually iterations of humanity uh, long ago in the past where there was no conflict and everybody was a being of light and it was like paradise. It was kind of like Garden of Eden. Everyone was chilling and enjoying themselves and having a wonderful time, which sounds good on the surface, but the problem is they were stagnating. Um, they had no motivation to move to the next level of consciousness and here we are not even halfway through the great cycle of the universe in terms of what we can grow into and become way beyond a human being. So um, the divine being said, okay, well, this isn't working so well. They're stagnating here at human because they have no motivation. So we have to introduce some catalyst. We have to introduce some challenge. So being said, okay, we'll sign up to be the bad guys and we'll come in and do the things that challenge people in order to catalyze them to move to the next level of their growth. So that's my understanding of why we even have such challenge and difficulty. Um, now, there's a, a lot more explicit reasons why there are so many beings here on Earth who are so adversarial, but that's beyond the scope of the question. If you want to learn more about that, read the uh, Law of One material, and you can read the fascinating story about that if you want to check that out. So my belief is um, Earth right now is not supposed to be a paradise. It's a training ground. It's an evolutionary opportunity. A soul that chose to come to Earth now knew it would be coming into a very difficult scenario because it needed the exact kind of catalyst we've got here to, to evolve itself. So my fundamental premise is, as, an, as my own perspective, is I'm here to grow and evolve. I am on the path of service to other, and so it's great that there's so much chaos here, 
because it gives me a whole lot more opportunity to serve others. If everyone were chill and wonderful and, and cruising, you know, they wouldn't need my help <laughs> or any other light workers' help. So in order to polarize service to other, I have to come into a planet where there is need for support. So uh, Earth has plenty of opportunities for that right now, and I, and in my own way, support those that I can. So my view is that in the great scheme, nothing's wrong at all. There is conflict, there is challenge, but part of the game is to awaken from the illusion that you know this human life and this Earth is the only game there is. Step a, a level or two back, see the larger evolutionary logic behind it all. And then you see all the intensity and, and craziness and forces of evil and forces of light is, is exactly the game the divine is choosing to play here. And I view it as simply evolutionary opportunity. Now, let me talk about where one, now one thing I do know is that your reality is strongly colored by what you choose to believe. So um, I myself, you know, I didn't get into the whole deep state thing and investigate that, but a few years ago I became deeply concerned about the environmental crisis and read deeply on that and became really depressed. <laughs> oh my God, it's, a, it's really looking grim and not a lot of hope of, you know, the earth coming back to a beautiful, uh, you know, state of ecological harmony anytime soon. And I had to finally back off from that. It was just too psychologically devastating to me to go too deep into that. Um, so my own view is I am going to create my own reality in as positive and harmonious a way as I can. And where I put my focus is what will determine my attitude and my reality. There is another spiritual rule of life, which is as within, so without the energy, consciousness, and attitude I hold inside myself will be reflected in my external environment. And sure enough, in the many years of life where I was you know, more reactive and, and wasn't really all very self-aware, I had a lot more conflict in my external environment. Now that I'm more awake and more consciously connected to my spiritual self, my inner reality is much more harmony, flow, ease, and grace more consistently. And sure enough, my outer reality reflects that. So what you put your attention on, you become. So if you dive deeply into the, the machinations of evildoers, then, then your focus on that will tend to attract that sort of thing to you more. So um, if you focus on love, light, harmony, if you do a lot of meditation and focus on you know, making your own consciousness really bright and shiny and clear, then that'll be more what you experience. So overall, I believe, for myself anyway, my choice of trying to be as awake, conscious, and bright spiritually as I can allows me to serve better because that means I get to radiate that energy out to the world. And every being who awakens or who holds a more positive, uplifting sort of consciousness, who's happy, joyful, euphoric, etc., is radiating that energy to the planet and making it easier for everyone else to pick it up. Um, now, am I saying that no one should be concerned about the machinations of evildoers? No. It depends on your karmic role, you know, is it mine to do? My own role is to do what I just described. There are others who are those who are, it's their evolutionary role to dig deep into the investigation, find out what's going on, expose the evildoers, uncover the deep state, all that. And if you feel compelled to that, and that brings you a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment, then that is your job. So um, there are billions of people here and we each have a little bit of a unique role. There's no one thing I believe that everyone should be doing. Uh, you asked, you know, should we be prepping? Should we do whatever? You know, I don't, you know, I, I might buy a little bit of emergency food in case there's a power outage or something, but I'm not gonna be stocking up for years worth of stuff in case the whole society collapses. My goal then would be not to hibernate, but to go out and say, how can I help? How can we go out and serve those who are in difficulty? So my belief is actually that a strong connection with my own divine self is the best insurance. And if I am, as I am, focused on service to other, and, and if there were challenge, my focus would not be how can I just take care of me, or me and my beloved, but how can we help those who are in difficulty, then the focus would be to go out and serve anyway. Um, so basically, my belief is that my own higher self knows what's coming, and it has ability to see into the, the most probable future, and it's giving me intuitive guidance all the time anyway about what to do. So I think the best prepping is not necessarily storing up a whole bunch of food, water, guns, and ammo, but 
just to really cultivate a really strong connection with your own internal wisdom, which then you can be guided by if there is a time of challenge. Now, is it wise to have some food and water on hand in case, you know, for short-term challenge? Of course it is, you know, not a bad idea at all. But to get into this paranoid prepper mentality, for me, is not my own choice because, again, because I believe my guidance will be there and resources will be provided as needed to, to, uh, to let me serve what I'm here to do, then I think that will be there. So that is a, uh, a broad focus. Um, and I hope that's a helpful answer. Again, my own choice in terms of, you know, being aware of all this difficult stuff going on. Um, I believe that the, the shift to light is happening anyway and it's inevitable and, and the dark forces are going to fall away just because the, it's an evolutionary time to move from the time of darkness, separation, um, you know, male dominance, patriarchy, all that, into a time of more equality and love and spiritual awakening. And, and nothing's going to stop that, that rising tide, no matter how much the dark forces fight. I do believe they are realizing they're on their last leg and, and are just putting up their biggest fight that they can. So I personally believe the rise of the, of the more harmonious light is inevitable. And um, that's why I think the best service I can do is to focus on love, light, spread information and energy about awakening and peacefulness and how to live a really wonderful, fulfilling life. And again, everyone who does that, you know, lifts everyone else up energetically. And, and we're, if those who are called to serve others, we call in the way that we're ser called to serve. Some are out there on the street doing hands-on work. Others are doing more metaphysical things in the background. And we all have our role to play. So that's my answer to you, Daniel. Fantastic question. Now, this next question, uh, there's only two of them here on this Ask the Astro Shaman, is from Anna. And this is going to involve some, some astrological technical stuff. So those of you who like technical astrology stuff, um, hang out for this. Um, so here we go. So Anna writes... I've been thinking a lot about my role in the world as a healer and looking back at instances in my life when, even at a very early age, I became a healer of sorts inadvertently. For example, as my grand aunt's leg was amputated, I ended up being the one cleaning her wound and changing her bandages. I must have been eight years old then. After, when I was an ensemble member in a musical at my school, my director asked me to play the lead when the original actress didn't show up that evening. I'd learned the whole play because I simply liked it so much. And my director trusted me enough to ask me to do this because the show must go on. I must have been 12, and the girl playing the lead, Eliza Doolittle, in My Fair Lady, was a 16 or 17-year-old high schooler. I couldn't do any of the costume changes, as the wardrobe didn't fit me, but I did the whole thing and felt very proud of it. So in a way, I healed the performance that night. Later on at 17, when my parents and I emigrated to the U.S., escaping the violence of the war on drugs in Colombia, I was the one who wrote the account of our experiences in our application because I was the most proficient in English of us three, and my parents relied on my storytelling abilities to make our case. So to amplify the meaning of healing, I could also include that example as moving to the U.S. literally healed my mother, who was suffering from alopecia from all the stress she was suffering. There are more memories such as those that show my strong inclination toward healing, including my latest permaculture project which I've had to put on hold because of the resurfacing of paramilitary activity in the region. So, as I get ready to move to London in March, on March 28th, and hopefully start a new life there, my question is, how could I find a way to focus my abilities and inclinations toward this when it seems the range is so broad? Thanks for any insight you can share. So, a great question from Anna. And by the way, I am posting uh, a PDF of the three charts I'm looking at. There's a natal chart, a transit chart, and a, a secondary progress chart. And uh, there is a link to that from this post here on astroshaman.com. And, and this post is on YouTube as well, and I will put the link there too. So either way, you'll be able to link over and view these charts if you want to. So if you want to have the charts ready, do that now, and then continue the video. So, um, Anna is born October 31, 1981, 4 16 p.m. in Cali, Colombia. That's C A L I, Colombia. If you want to verify that you have her chart right, if you're running it yourself, Aries rising 14 degrees 1 minute. The moon is 22 degrees 22 minutes Sagittarius. So, healer. Um, to get to the healer uh, interpretation, I noticed the sixth house of healing has Virgo on the cusp. 
and that has two ruling planets. Mercury is the widely acknowledged ruler. Many also believe that Chiron is a ruler of Virgo. So the way Mercury and Chiron are set up in Anna's chart is going to have a lot to say about her abilities as a healer. As it turns out, Mercury, uh, again, the more widely acknowledged ruler of the House of Healing, is in the middle of a huge stellium in the sign of Libra. Uh, it has uh, five planets and points surrounding it. So Mercury is here at 20 degrees Libra. Uh, prior to it, I've got Saturn at 16 Libra. Saturn's important because he's uh, Anna's midheaven ruler. And as always, when I do this stuff, I tend to uh, sometimes address the person asking the question, Anna, sometimes I'll address you, the viewer. So part of me as I go back and forth spontaneously between those. So that right away lets us know, okay, here's the planet that in the chart rules healing, sixth house ruler, conjunct the planet of career, Saturn. So right away that says healer as profession is supported. Uh, Mercury is also conjunct the descendant, the house of others, that, that supports one-on-one -on -one healing. And the fact that Mercury is angular, close to one of those four power points in the chart, um, also lets us know it's an important point. Uh, Mercury also more loosely conjuncts Ceres, uh, actually back in the sixth house now. And um, Ceres is both about uh, sorrow and wounding, which is part of what a healer can work with. And Ceres is also abundance and harvest. So, so working with other people's challenges in order to gain abundance is, is supported there. On the other side of Mercury, a little bit later in Libra, are a very tight Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. And Jupiter and Pluto together is wealth. <laughs> uh, mega rich people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have strong Jupiter-Pluto aspects. So this also says if you take the path of the healer, there could be great wealth for you. And wealth could be money, but wealth can be anything of value to you, Anna. So whatever you value most, if you walk the path of the healer, that can be given to you. Um, so that's uh, tremendous support right there for you as a healer. Um, I wanted to point out Mercury has several other aspects in your chart. And I wanted to mention just a few of them. Mercury um, is actually part of an aspect pattern called a Yod, or Finger of God. Um, the planet Chiron is at the tip of the Yod, down in house number two. The back end has Mercury on one end, and then the Neptune and Moon on the other end. And I have sketched this out on the first page of that PDF I mentioned. So as I mentioned a moment ago, Chiron is the other ruler of healing. So here we have Mercury, the, the widely acknowledged ruler of healing, pointing toward Chiron, the one planet that I use that is most explicitly about healing. And then on the back end, we have Moon Neptune, tightly conjunct. Neptune says divine energy and guidance will come to you when you do this. The moon says follow your heart, what resonates for you emotionally and move it in that direction, which gives us our first clue, Anna, to your question, which I'll just tell you right now, what should I do? What are you being guided to do? Um, you know, Mercury has a huge number of aspects. Um, Chiron also aspects quite a few different points and planets. And the chart doesn't say there's just one particular healing specialty. With this many aspects, your healing may go in many interesting directions. It might be direct healing, it might be indirect healing. So the chart doesn't say that there's any one specific way it should happen. Therefore, since you can't work it out logically, <clears throat> the only way to be guided is intuitively. Um, in my own life, I've got to the point where I can hardly even make a rational decision anymore. That's been taken offline because now the intuition is giving me those guidances directly from source. So in your case, Anna, don't try to figure it out. I mean, if you want to put it through your mental hopper and logic out what's the best healing route I can take now, go ahead. But I think you can shortcut that and just get your best answers if you just say, okay, Spirit, I do wish to walk the path of the healer. Um, at this moment, which flavor of healing is the most appropriate for me to express into the world? And just relax, let the inner guidance come along, and it should tell you. Um, you have a lot of Neptune aspects. Again, on the, on the aspect grid of this first page, I've circled some of the Neptune um, aspects. It, it aspects every personal planet except Mars. And this lets us know, Anna, you have a very strong intuition. Either, um, you know, I, I would suspect it's pretty strongly online already, but you know, just, you've got a good flow of energy and information always available to you. When you have that strong a Neptune uh, set up, there's a lot of transparency between you and your higher self. 
and it may already be active or you may need to activate it a little bit through um, making a stronger connection to divine source. I'll mention also briefly I have a heal, an invocation for embodied awakening that uh, earlier I gave how to get to my invocations. It's the first of the two posts I mentioned. And if you just relax and say to your higher self, maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please, and you relax into passive breathing, anyone can do this, and you just let the breath come. Uh, sometimes within a very short time, you have this shift of consciousness, and all of a sudden you are the ego joined with the higher self, and instead of having to call your intuition external, you've become intuition. That which is operating your very body is your source of intuition, your higher self. So um, if you don't already feel like you're getting strong, clear guidance from your inner guidance, Anna, then use a tool like that or whatever works for you to, to get that more consistent flow and it'll let you know which particular healing avenues are best to explore at that time. Um, so that, I think, is um, the natal chart answer to your question. There, there's other things, too. But um, again, this is just a, a brief video and not an uh, extended reading. I do, however, want to give you a few timing things, and I know you're moving to, uh, you're moving there at the end of March, and there are a few things that are relevant to the question in terms of timing. Um, right now, the transiting planet Pluto is square your natal Mercury, again, that planet that rules your healing. It's going to be in orb of the square through 2020. So that's a tremendous empowerment of you as the healer. Um, so the timing is really good to move into that. Um, also, the transiting planet Saturn is also square your Mercury off and on all year. He's actually making three exact squares through the course of 2019. So um, that will not only test you as a healer and, and let you know of any areas where you need to kind of get more on track and learn or gain prowess in your healing ability, but to the degree that you are already up to speed, Saturn will give you opportunities. Remember, Saturn is your midheaven ruler. He rules your career. And to have the Midheaven Ruler make three exact contacts, very powerful to your healing planet, implies that it is actually a really good time to bring the healing online as a profession if you want to. Now again, astrology is not concretely predictive, it's archetypally predictive, but since you asked about healing and you've already said you want to do that, um, the timing is incredible. <laughs> With both Pluto and Saturn very powerfully lighting up the planet of healing in your chart. Um, I'll mention the planet Neptune is just now beginning a quincunx to Mercury, which will last for four years. And here's that planet that I mentioned. It's divine flow. It's divine inspiration. It's divine healing energy coming through you. So a quincunx doesn't connect automatically, but if you make the right adjustment, that Neptunian energy can flow through to your healing ability. So calling on your divine consciousness to support your healing through guiding you what to do and flowing the energy through you to do it is super powerful. And if that wasn't enough, the other major transit that relates to this is in mid-2020, a little over a year from now as I record this, transiting Chiron is going to start squaring your midheaven. Wow! That's a lot of synchronicity. Chiron, the planet of healing and mentoring, uh, beginning to square the midheaven, the point of career. So you've already got plenty of juice rolling to get it rolling, but this says by mid-2020 through probably early 2022, with the speed Chiron's moving now, um, that healing energy toward career is profoundly supported by moving energy. I'll mention, in closing, two progressed energies that are relevant as well. Um, one is a very long-term play. Your progressed Saturn is very close to a conjunction to Mercury. Now, again, in the natal chart, they're only about four degrees apart. And here you are born in 81. It's taken your whole lifetime for progressed Saturn to move about four degrees. That means that uh, <laughs> progressed Saturn is going to be on Mercury for many, many years, a couple decades at least. So I don't normally use a planet as slow as Saturn in progressed motion, but because of the relevance, here's the progressed planet of career, um, getting very close to a conjunction to the planet of healing. Uh, this actually says to me you could do healing as a profession for a very long time, decades literally, as progressed Saturn um, hangs out around Mercury. Um, and you could have done it even without that, but here's yet another thumbs up from the universe pr promoting that. And, and then the final thing I want to point out is a doubling effect. The progressed midheaven, um, the moving point of, of career, is now 
he's not quite there yet, but in about eight or nine months, he will come within orb of a square to Chiron. So not only do we have um, next year transit Chiron going to be squaring the midheaven, the planet of healing to the career point, the progressing career point, a little, just a few months after that, is going to start connecting to natal Chiron. And when you get a double like that, the planets doing each other, that's a huge, powerful synchronicity that it's good to pay attention to. So because of the moving energies, Anna, I'd say there's a tremendous opportunity for you to move more powerfully into that healing world if you want to. Now, this all supports that. Does it require you to be a healer? Not at all. But uh, it definitely supports it. And if you're so inspired, then there's no question that the skies are in alignment for you to do that. So that's my answer to your question, Anna, and I hope that's helpful. Um, so this wraps up this third edition of Ask the Astro Shaman. If you would like me to answer your question too, all you have to do is email me, info at astroshaman.com. And uh, I post these to YouTube. I put them on my website at astroshaman.com. I announce the uh, Ask the Astro Shaman videos in my newsletter that you can sign up for on astroshaman.com too. So. So glad to be able to share this with you. I love doing these, and I hope you enjoy watching them. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.